Hello and welcome back to a very special version of the final siren. Jeez, Oz, I tell you what, talk about the dockery of all dockers' way to win a final, mate. 11 7 73 to 8 12 60. The Fremantle Dockers were down by 41 points at one stage, mate. In the second quarter, you'd packed it up, mate. You were done. You were like, how are we going to do this? And I said, mate, just remember that how do you eat an elephant? And you looked at me and said, what do you mean, how do you eat an elephant? I said, mate, you eat an elephant one bite at a time. Yep. It's all about just taking small steps yep. to get through and, and get back in the game. And and get back in the game we did, mate. What I mean, what are your thoughts after the game right now? What are, what are you thinking? Yeah, never in doubt. <laughs> um, uh, look, you, you do it tough as a Fremantle fan, but I think every football team has moments where it's just heart-stopping, obviously, and the idea that it's, it's a long journey, sometimes it's painful, but mm. there's nothing more joyous than seeing your team rally after you think that it's all over Red Rover yeah. and just chipping away, chipping away, and I honestly think in that second quarter when we start coming back and we've got that momentum, I'm thinking we are more than in this. We are in, into the eyeball stage of like taking over this game. And then of course in the third quarter they come out, kick a nice goal and we're thinking, okay, here we go. But then again, bounce back. And just the resilience of this group and to speak to the character of the group to never give in and we've seen it time after time and I have to keep reminding myself that you just can't write this team off. Mm. This team has guts, it's got grit, it's got resilience and it's just a pleasure to actually watch them just dig in and get the job done. Yeah, it was fantastic, wasn't it? And look, you know, you look at that, I mean, down by 41 points, Jai Miss, a young fella who's come in, he, he hasn't really touched the ball. He takes a mark 10 metres out and then he goes back. The guy who is renowned for his elite goal kicking, how, dead eye dick, mate, the man who never misses, misses, goes back and hits the post and you just it just deflates the air out of the crowd. But then all of a sudden we get a, a bit of a soft free kick to Sonny Walters, probably the first time he's had a soft free kick in a while. Yeah. Okay. He goes back, he kicks a goal. Then all of a sudden going into the halftime siren, a miss has taken a, a mark. Yep. A few metres, you know, 45 metres out on the angle, mate, goes back, jails it, and we're back up and about. Yep. So, you know, those goals in the in the second quarter to get us back in the game, to give us a, a red-hot fashion sniff, mate. You know, so that we go into the the um, halftime break only down by, I think it was about 15 points. Um, you know, that was that was outstanding. And then, you know, you do get the gut punch from the first goal mm. they kick at the, after the three quarter. But in the end, mate, we've outscored them in the... After quarter time, I think it look at that, it's seven goals. I mean, sorry, 11 goals, six uh, to where they kick three goals, seven. Yep. So, mate, very, very good stuff there by the Dockers. And I think led by, in the end, I think led started, kick started with Mundy holding, holding the barrier up. Sarong and Brayshaw really went to work in that second quarter and started to get up and bow. Marcus Bontempelli, just on opposition, oh. his first half oh. of footy was. I was like, oh, man, like Marcus Bontepelli's just like, boys, get on my back. I'm going to take yep. you. And he looked like a million bucks, mate. He looked like the best player in the competition. Yep. He was making everyone look silly. He's kicking goals, getting clearances, getting all types of it, but managed to slow him down, managed to put the brakes on him. Um, the worm started to turn. Our X Factor, Sonny Walters, gets up and about in the third quarter. The big lobster starts pinching him, mate, and just banging him through. Now, how that mentality changed, mate, when he took a mark down here, he's kicked it out of bounds on the full. Yep. Then in the third quarter, he's clunked to and just gone, bang, thank you very much, straight through the high diddle diddle, yeah. and we're up and about, mate. Yeah, look, absolutely. And ultimately, finals, it's a big stage. It's a steep learning curve. Mm. And I think they came out and used that experience to their advantage. And it was their campaigners their seasoned campaigners who, who took over the game early and it was just wrestling that momentum uh, and you know trying to turn that tide which you've already pointed to and just seeing our guys get back to what they do best and chase and tackle and pressure get numbers around the contest and get the ball on our terms and to be fair everything that could go wrong with Frio did go wrong early on in the piece mm. you know that the bounce for example we, we're talking balls going over heads or you know, not quite getting there and balls dropping short, um, you know, turns slipping over, um, you know, the the rub of the green, we could even talk about there at one stage, which was like 13-3 or something at one stage. Mm. And, you know, the crowd, again, 
in the game, wanting to get in the game, just give us something to feed off. And then once that happened and once we started getting that momentum, that's when we really you know, took over the game. And for Fremantle fans, that's all you need. All you need is a sniff and we'll get around the team. Yeah. So, again, you, you've mentioned it. Um, Sarong and Brayshaw, just unbelievable. And Sarong was huge. He had a massive five minutes in that second towards the end, which was huge. Walter's goal really in the second was the release. I think, again, you've talked about X Factor, but it's the ex the experience and the fact that he just, again, put the team in some, especially the forward line on his back and just said, right, let's, I'm going to do it. And he mm. did. And he was able to deliver. And that's what we needed from him and, and just how fortunate are we to have him in that forward line well, to get us going? I think in the end with Sonny, mate, he, I think he's, what, he's kicked three goals, sorry, I think he kicked one out of bounds on the full. Mm. So, you know, seven scoring shots or opportunities to score. Look, he, his crumbing goal in the third quarter was outstanding. Um, you know, his goal that he probably should have hand-passed it to Freddie, but Freddie gets the tackle and he just snaps it and that was kind of the nail in the coffin. Mate, for him to end up with 18 disposals and kick three goals, sorry, we talked about it on our show. We talked about how important Sonny Walter's going to be. His form in this last month of footy has been outstanding and he is a dead set champion of our club yep. and if he can keep riding this form into next week and give us that, that forward spark that we need because we know it's a bit of our Achilles heel we know our forward line is, is, is probably our weakness um, at overall but just him working hard, kicking those goals. Freddie doing the same thing. I thought Switter and Schultz did a lot of unrewarded work. Uh, big Roaring Lobster got his pinchies on a couple. Giant Miss kicked a couple, and how good is it to have a forward who kicks yeah. goals? You know, Logue <laughs> tried his hardest. He continues to battle, um, the, you know, throughout. And look, it, I, I thought it was a really, really outstanding effort to come back and essentially, you know, do the old uh, Dockery don't score a goal in the first quarter, yep. just give them a good old-fashioned head start yep, yep. and just, just mow them down, mate. Yep. We're a bit like um, Chautauqua. Oh! The famous horse who just uh, misses the gate a bit <laughs> and then she steams home around the outside. I've got to um, ask you this. Yes. Like, before we go into, like, crucial stats and all mm. that sort of stuff that you want to bang on about, I'm going to ask you about moments in the game. I know what my favourite moment in the game is, but I'd like... What are you thinking in terms of a moment defining for you? It doesn't have to be a goal. Doesn't it? Could be anything. What stands out for you? I think it was it was more um, the individual effort by young Chapman in the back line. And I know that sounds a bit weird, but I thought some of his efforts in his one on one contests and his ability to play on Bond in when he, he went bounced forward, back. He bounced um, back. That's and good. his bounce off the back line. A guy who's played what, less than thirty games in his career? Mm. Probably less than twenty. Mm. Or probably yeah, around twenty games. He was outstanding. Um Hayden Young's last five minutes of the game, I thought he was really good. But I guess the 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 moment where I was like, We we've got this is it's probably the the Frederick tackle and the the goal. Yep. I thought that was a real big turning point in the game. And then, of course, Nadia Driscoll, mate, from the pocket. Yeah. Just what about yourself, mate? Is well, those two, those two are huge. Here? But the one thing, again, for me, that just stands out as the trademark of Fremantle Football Club is the Schulte tackle, where he's just done that 20 meter sprint and he's absolutely nailed. I'm sure it was Caleb Daniel in the middle. He's just absolutely nailed him. And that was just, you know, pressure through the middle and it was just up and about. Just give the crowd something to go. I'm sure it was the case if I'm wrong. Well, whatever. But the the ability just to to get the crowd going through small things is so important. And I guess one of the things we need to be mindful of next week, enemy territory, mate. We mm. are in enemy territory, but there's nothing to be worried about. We play the MCG well, yep. considering how many times we've played there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I, I think... Given what Collingwood are coming from, you know, certainly just down on, on obviously having the game and then just missing out and then, you know, injuries and so forth. I think we are in this big time. Oh, up to our eyeballs. Oh, my mate. goodness. Up to our eyeballs. I just thought I'd give one little quick shout out as well. I thought uh, James Aisha's second half yep. in particular was really outstanding. Yep. Um, you know, he's, a, he's, a, he's signed a new contract in the middle of the week. Um, you know, he's not he's not one of our, our star players. He come over for, for not much. Um, you know, he came over, he's, you know, he has his ups and downs, but I thought his game in particular, the times where he was level headed mm. and he, he showed composure, I thought was really outstanding. So look, I thought he had a really good game. I thought Alex Pierce absolutely dominated the naughty boy, um, Aaron Norton. 
Um, again, Pierce played a really good game on him last time we played. His strength, his leadership in the back line, outstanding, of course. Luke Ryan continues to rack him up in the back line, especially when he can't, plays against uh, the Bulldogs. Yeah, mate. And again, across the board, it's quite even. So clearances were even at 37. Um, you know, we dominated set and clearances 13 8 and inside 50, 62, 53. Mm. But what I loved about, in particular, Darcy and then Lob joining in as well was the hit out count 61. Um, you know, the idea of getting that many hit outs to advantage is so important for us. And mm. it just shows us again, we're taking that next step and having, you know, Darcy take control of the middle was really important. When we had that ascendancy, we just kept it going, kept in. And that's the benefit of the 666. That's, that's yeah. the benefit of that. Um, and, and seeing um, Sarong and, and Brayshaw take advantage of that and Mundy and so forth. So, yeah, yeah, so exciting. Mate, can I also say one of my favourite um, favorite moments of the game was when Lockie Schultz in the pocket here got in a bit of a scuffle. I always <laughs> yeah. love a bit of a fight. <laughs> Five dogs went in. Yeah. One other docker went in. I think it was Blakey Acres. Drew another four more dogs in. And all of a sudden, there were, they, threw, they were just like, throw it in, threw it in. Dockers win the clearance and kick the goal. Yep. I, I thought that was just, that's just yep. so funny. Yeah, and like yep. Luke Beveridge is in the background yelling, ball, ball, ball. Yeah, yeah. Like stop fighting and get involved in yeah. the ball, but fantastic. Mate, uh, anything else you want to discuss in, in, in regards to this game? I just can't believe that we've won. No. Mate, really, I'm, I'm still kind of like in this state of shock where yeah. the first quarter and a half I went to was, some dark places. Was, uh, was, was pretty putrid, let's be honest. Yeah, it was. Fumbly, slipping over, missing kicks, balls bouncing the other way, not attacking it, losing confidence in yourself, lack of intensity, all these things. And then all the, all the toy, oh, the, inex, the ex, inexperience, inexperience, yeah. mate. I tell you what, what a load of uh, cod wash yep. is all I can say. I think that's the right word. Yeah, look, yeah. <laughs> but like in the end, Oz, like what what experience, what what would an inexperienced team do when they're down by forty one points? They'd They'll probably fold, fold up. Yeah. They'd fold up and they'd pack it up and say, well, sorry, unlucky, not today's not our day. But an experienced team, and that's mate, that's what finals is all about. Fin the goalposts don't change, mate. No. Footy doesn't change. Yep. It's all the same football, and we're playing finals like style of football mm. all year round so the boys stand up they trust the system they go back into it and they eat that elephant one bite at a time mate. yeah yeah it's all it takes man is just believe in yourself that the idea that hey if we just all play our role anything is possible and with this team anything is possible got to get around them oh. all right guys i think we'll go to an interview now with one david mundy from the young Buck Old Bull. That's what he's famous for, isn't he? That, yeah. that podcast? Yeah, that, that podcast. That doesn't, do, doesn't do much else. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. Well, we're joined by, uh, with David Mundy. Mate, what a game. Uh, what do you take from that? Well, I'll take a lot of confidence. We uh, clearly didn't start the game very well. Um, but I guess to the Bulldogs' credit, they, they really jumped into the game and were pressuring us, forcing turnovers and really ordering spot parts of the ground. Uh, from our perspective. Um, but yeah, like we've done all year, we've been able to kind of grind our way through difficult periods like that um, and then really shut them out post, I guess, quarter time and, and found our way a bit. Yeah, look, it was awesome just to see the evening up of the contest, particularly through the numbers and weighted numbers and so forth. And I thought the boys really dug in. Um, you could see they were chipping away, chipping away. And, um, you know, Duck said uh, quarter time, you know, the only way to eat an elephant is to, uh, you know, to eat it one uh, spoonful at a time. So... You guys were just chipping away and it was very, you could see what was going on, but it was just heart and mouth stuff. For you as a, as a player and even the playing group, how, how were they taking it all in and, and working through it? Yeah, well, I've never actually eaten an elephant, but um, <laughs> we're talking about uh, particularly quarter time and in that first half, we were really failing to execute our basics and talk about around the contest and numbers and things like that. Um, and, you know, so numbers are one thing, but when we had our hands on the ball, we were quite fumbly uh, and turning it over under the Bulldogs' pressure, like I said. So, um, you know, that was our big focus at halftime in particular. There wasn't a whole lot of change, you know, structurally or how we wanted to play or anything like that. But, um, you know, we just got back to work and, and were able to execute our fundamentals a bit better. Nice. Um, Barrett, how did you find your second quarter, mate? I thought you were actually the catalyst of lifting in that when they, they came early in the second quarter and then we kind of stood up, but it was it was kind of your work in the midfield that was holding holding the boys at bay and, and keeping them. How did you find, and did you have to deep uh, delve deep into your experience to, to draw something out to get the boys up and about? Oh, well, thank, thank you very much. I can't really uh, remember the second quarter that well, to be honest. <laughs> 
Uh, now, as, uh, coming into this game, I guess one of my you know, absolute strengths in this team at the moment is you know, my experience and living through a lot of different um, of those different types of games like we've had on. So, um, but ultimately, my role in the last eighteen months has been you know, put guys in positions where they can absolutely flourish out on the field, and um, you know, I felt like we were able to do that. So Andy and Caleb, in particular, in the midfield group, exploded and, and really dominated the contest. And, um, yeah, Sean had a really great game in the mid in the ruck as well, gave it, giving us some pretty good service there. So, um, yeah, I think as a whole, we really turned it around. I wouldn't um, necessarily put it onto any individual. Yeah, beautiful. Look, obviously, with opportunity, you know, you, you take that with two hands and, and Jai Miss, who just uh, just had the opportunity to um, to kick one early, obviously a bit jittery, but then just came back and exploded. Thoughts on that? Yeah, he's, he's, um, he shows a bit, doesn't he? And, like the year that he's had coming in as a really high draft pick, had a bit of a taste of it early, and then had that kidney injury in the waffle. And uh, you know, when that prognosis had came come out, that was his year done essentially. So um, the fact what he's been through this year and his diligence to his you know, rehab and getting his body right, first of all from a health perspective, but then to be able to build himself up physically to come and really you know, perform like he did tonight um, is an absolute testament to him. It's, it's got an incredibly bright future. I think we'd all agree. Um, but I'd love him to kick the oh, kick to him in this place, guys. <laughs> now, Dave, um, at the, his kick he took after um, at the halftime siren, mate, you went over and had a word to him. Is there anything you said? Did you say, mate, big sticks, just remember, it's the two big ones that matter, or was it just a uh, calm your breathing down, mate, go back and jail it? Yeah, well, I missed that one not too not too long before that. Um, and up until that point, I guess, hadn't really had much of a sniff of it because the ball had been living in the Bulldogs' forward half. So uh, I just went up. I knew there wasn't long to go. So I just ran over to him and just told him to take his time and back himself in. And I think we speak about a lot is um, you know, playing the game to win and, and really you know believing in ourselves and taking it on. So he's obviously got a beautiful kicking action and a routine that he's honed uh, to a pretty fine degree. So I uh, had a lot of confidence when he... Uh, we marked that, but I wouldn't say he's played in front of 58,000 too many times. So, um, <laughs> you know, those cool, um, you know, jittery moments can be um, forgiven, I think. Yeah, nice. Oh, look. When you've got a whole group of, of young guys coming through, you know, finals experience obviously is lacking there, but they're so keen. When you have an, an opportunity to play in front of such a big crowd, Surely you think now that's, you know, that's something that's just going to build on for next week and the week after or potentially you know, down the track. You'd like to think that this is going to be the launching pad for the crew uh, moving forward. Yeah, well, I guess um, a lot of the uh, footy experts this week and, and oh, sorry, for the last fortnight have been talking about, yeah, this will be a great experience for us, but expecting us to bow out pretty quickly. But um, the internal belief of this group um, certainly is not thinking that way. We have uh, the utmost confidence in our physical capabilities and, and our teamwork and our connection. We can really drive this club and this team forward this year. So um, that's our absolute focus. And, yeah, playing it in an environment like that can certainly be a nice little experience for a lot of guys who haven't, haven't done that before. But, um, you know, regardless of experience or games played or anything like that, the, the 23 that go out and represent Fremantle have been getting it done all year. So um, we'll hang our hat on that. Nice. Can I just ask another follow-on, yeah, mate? Sorry, on. just a quick one. What? How did you find the the week by? Was that helpful for you guys in in terms of the rest recuperation, or was it more of a disruption to the flow? Yeah, it was. Uh, I hated it to be honest. There's obviously so much going on. Um, we had a pretty quiet um, start to the week leading into the bye week, and then um, a pretty big training session on Saturday, obviously to kind of kickstart the system again. Um, and the first half of that training session was one of our worst of the year. We. Uh, <laughs> JL to kind of spark us up a bit, but um, you know, we found our flow pretty quickly after that. And, and this week's been you know, pretty normal. We tried to revert back to our process throughout the week as best we can. So, um, yeah, it'd be nice to get a bit of continuity again heading into next week's final. Now, Dave, you've played in pretty much all of our successful finals campaigns, mate. Um, how are you feeling the vibe around the group? Is it is it more of the 06 vibe? Is it more of the 2010 vibe? Or has it got more of a... 2012 or 13, 14 or 15 vibe. What, what's, well, how's the vibe, mate? Yeah, I'm not too short to be honest. So, uh, sorry, phone's going off. Bring <laughs> uh, my wife for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
No, I, I think each group, each iteration of Fremantle coming through the um, finals has been unique. I don't think I can compare it to uh, any group that I've been a part of coming through. I think, um, in particular, like our team's been driven by you know a core group of guys who are you know, twenty four and under, really. So, um, you know, I've got, and we have a lot of faith in each other. So, um, yeah, we'll take this ride for as long as we can. Nice. And going back to the game, I know there were so many moments within the game, and there's probably too many to to mention, but if there's one thing that sort of stands out for you as being something quite memorable, which either either turned it our way or just something which epitomises the group, what would it be for you, bud? Uh, something that I think that epitomises the group is um, Michael Fredericks chased down tackle in that last quarter. Um, you know, he chased from 40 metres away, got a fingernail in and, and gets his teammate an easy shot on goal and an easy goal in the end. So... I think that's something that our small forwards in particular have really been bringing all year and something that um, has put us in great stead um, to you know, turn the ball over in great areas and give ourselves a good look at it going the other way. So, yep. um, nice. yeah, that was Nathan O'Driscoll's goal in the, in the pocket. Oh, as soon yeah. as he got the ball, I was like, nothing to worry here, just you'll nail this. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks for joining us, David, mate. Fantastic. The journey continues for one more week at least now for you. Um, enjoy next week. We're playing at the G on a Saturday night, mate, up and about against Collingwood. We're a red-hot sniff, aren't we? Absolutely. I can't wait. All right. Thank Thanks, you very mate. much, David. Oh, what a great interview with the great man, David The great Mundy. man. How good is he, mate? And just like screening the missus call just to talk to the yeah, boys. Yeah. Bit of a ledge. Yeah, the anyway, boys. Anyway, um, Mate, that we're we're off to Collingwood. We're off to the G yep. Saturday night. Um, back to back Saturday nights, mate. <laughs> and if we win that, we're over to Sydney, mate. So look, I tell you what, we'll check the airfares. We'll see how much they are. Mm. We'll check the bank balance, and we'll see if we can. And we'll also check with our lovely partners and yep. see if uh, if we're able to get a heads up to cool. maybe head over. But who knows, oh mate? Boy. All right, guys, thanks for listening and watching uh, the final siren. If you're on YouTube, why not subscribe down here? If you're uh, if you're listening to it somewhere else, why not rate and review us? And also on Monday, we'll have our Purple Rain, Purple Rain? Uh, review show that we'll do. Um, we're at Purple Rain 95, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah.